Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I am going to be reviewing Al-Kindi, the father of Arab philosophy. This is a biography of this said philosopher and I first became interested or was made aware of this individual through another book that I read and reviewed on my channel, The Secret Lives of Numbers by Kate Kitagawa. Al-Kindi is credited as being one of the founders of cryptography, which is very, very important in modern day internet security and communication. And I wanted to read more about him because I had not heard about him. And so I decided to get this book out of the library and read it. So I'm going to be discussing what's in this book, what I liked about it, maybe what I didn't like. And as always, if you have any thoughts or comments on this book, please let me know in the comment section down below. So let's jump in. This is part of this great Muslim philosophers and scientists of the Middle Ages. And I've actually read one other book in this series on al Khwarizmi, who is credited with kind of bringing algebra to the Western world. And he was also part of this house of wisdom in Baghdad, which really helped synthesize ideas from the West, from Greek influence, as well as things coming out of India and keep everything right on things and then eventually introduce these ideas back to the West. So I already read one other book in this series and I'm familiar with the layout. So although I came to this with the interest in his contributions to math, this book is written as a biography. So we start with the, um, we start with the background in the world that Al-Kindi occupied. So we talk about his early life, the tribe he was um, born into, and the author also takes a lot of time to discuss the Arab world overall, the state of the Arab world, which tribes were influential, which groups were influential, as well as Islam, which was becoming a major religion around this time, the, the founder of Islam, Muhammad, and what happened after his death, how the religion was developing. There's also a discussion on what we think Al-Kindi's early life was like and the Greek influences that were big on him. So Socrates, Plato, Aristotle. So there is a lot that's covered in this book, a lot of background given. And I think some of that is also because not a whole lot is actually known about Al-Kindi's life, even though he wrote a lot. So his life is kind of a mystery in many, many regards, but the author does a good job building up the world that Al-Kindi would have occupied and lived in. So Al-Kindi becomes a member of the House of Wisdom and how the House of Wisdom was formed and key political players was mentioned in the book. So we have some good background on that. And while there, he produced a very large number of texts. I mean, this man was producing texts on astronomy, astrology, medicine, physics, um, ethics, music, philosophy, maybe physics, probably physics. Um, a lot. He produced, if, if it existed, then he was producing uh, work on it, which is really quite impressive when we think about nowadays. People tend to be um, very narrow in their focus and their scope. Well, Al-Kindi seemed to be a master or at least wrote about a wide variety of things. He worked alongside Al-Kharizmi or contributed or worked with on similar projects as Al-Kharizmi and Al-Kharizmi is notable for, as mentioned, introducing algebra and the word um, algorithm actually comes from Al-Kharizmi's name. It's a corruption of it. Also, Al-Kharizmi and Al-Kindi were both kind of influential in these Hindu Arabic numerals, which are an absolute game changer in mathematics. The um, the numbers one through nine and the number zero that you use today in day-to-day -day math did not just come out of nowhere. They were thought of. They originated on the Indian subcontinent. They moved through the Arab world and eventually reached the West where they are massively influential. So Al-Kindi had a hand in that. And as mentioned, he wrote on a large number of topics and was able to contribute to a large number of topics. He also had a rivalry working at the House of Wisdom with these brothers. Um, I want to get, is it... Banu Mansu brothers. Uh, I should have written Banu Musu, the Banu Musu brothers. Here they are. He apparently had some sort of disagreement with them and they wanted his library and they were able to acquire it and he was kicked out of the House of Wisdom or was somehow exiled. He came back in. Again, a lot of personal details from his life are not known. He was able to come back in, but at a lower rank. We're not entirely sure what happened, but there does seem to be some infighting and scholarly disagreements that occurred at the House of Wisdom. So Al-Kindi had to deal with that in his lifetime as well. But despite all this biography, I was here for the math. The math section of this book was admittedly quite brief. However, all of the subjects were brief. If you got this book out to read about his contributions to music or astronomy or medicine, you would also get only a brief section because the author is really trying to cover a lot here with a very little bit of time. And so this section that he, that I was interested in starts on page 88. And I'll just read the paragraph that really summarizes um, what 
what he's well known for, what he's kind of credited with starting. Today, many experts on cryptanalysis credit Al-Kindi and the Arabs for starting the field of study. Al-Kindi wrote at least a few manuscripts on the subject, which perhaps were the first of their kind. Portions of them reveal how Al-Kindi probably approached a foreign manuscript. He would study the characteristics of letters and determine how frequently they occurred in the text. In a way, this logic was not much different from how the manner in which he studied how different pitches can result in harmony, so a tie-in with other studies. He then would study the length of the overall text to get a full measurement of the occurrence of individual letters. So basically, he would try to see how often a letter would occur and if he could use that to maybe crack the code. And this is called, if I remember correctly, frequency analysis, and it is also used in cracking languages today. So or, or trying to decipher languages that are unknown to us today. So a language that maybe um, we discover that was written down, but we don't know what it is, we can actually apply this method. And this has, of course, been developed into the whole system that's used today in internet security. And um, there's a whole Wikipedia article that you can skim through if that is of interest to you on the actual field of um, cryptography. But El Kindi kind of kicked things off is the, the consensus. And um, it's interesting to see how some of these methods that he was using um, are still in use today. Overall, this book was pretty good. Something to note is this book is aimed for teens, so it is a little bit simplistic. For me personally, I felt like we spent a lot of time discussing like the rise of Islam and who these Greek thinkers were. Well, most adults wouldn't need that level of background, but that's just due to how the book is written. That isn't a flaw in the book, that's an audience mismatch. As an adult who already has familiarity, with these things, I don't need as much hand-holding or background. So some things were approached much more simply than an adult would probably prefer. However, that's not necessarily a bad thing because I would say this book is to provide an introduction to a figure that most people haven't heard about. And for that reason, it would be um, a very, very useful starting point. So I'm glad I started here. I may try to track down another book that's maybe aimed more for adults to see what I could get from it. But I think this was a very, very good place to start. I wish the first half of the book, which was shorter because that was a lot of background, which I already knew, and the second half, which discussed his particular text, was about twice as long to kind of dig more into what he was talking about and what he covered. But I think overall this book does serve a good, uh, the purpose of being a good introdu introduction to a figure that's not well known in the Western world. Al-Kindi is still well known in the Arab world today, but he is not well known in the Western world and I felt like this book did a good job of introducing him to the Western world in a way that was very, very accessible and I really enjoyed reading this book. So if you would like to read this book or have any thoughts or comments on this book, please leave it in the comment section down below. I would love to receive your thoughts and comments. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.